Before you can identify potential prospects, you need to define what your company can and cannot help prospects do. This is a two-step process. First, you need to create your ideal customer profile. And then, you need to build personas within that profile. Let's talk about ideal customer profiles first. Your ideal customer profile defines your target market. If you're a business-to-business -business or B2B salesperson, your ideal customer profile will be at the company level. If you sell directly to consumers as a B2C salesperson, it will be based on a particular slice of the general population. Whether you're B2B or B2C, here are some questions to consider when defining your ideal customer profile. First, are there economic factors that make a customer ideal or not ideal? In a B2B context, that might be the company's annual revenue, number of employees, or number of customers. In a B2C context, it might be a person's income, education, or household size. Second, is there a certain time frame when your product or service is more likely to be a priority for someone? If you're a B2B seller, there might be certain phases in a company's development or growth when your offering is especially helpful or relevant. Similarly, in a B2C context, your offering might appeal more to people in a particular phase of life. In both B2B and B2C selling, there might be seasonality factors that affect your ability to sell to your prospects. All of this information should be included in your ideal customer profile. Third, are there market segments that are ideal or not ideal to sell into? If you're selling to companies, you might define this in terms of vertical or industry. If you're selling to consumers, it might be a person's occupation, interests, or some particular aspect of their lifestyle. Fourth, are there geographic locations that are ideal or not ideal? If you're only able to serve customers who live within a certain distance of your office or who speak particular languages, make a note of that in your ideal customer profile. You don't want to spend your time targeting prospects your company will never be able to serve. Fifth, are there legal standards or other requirements that might exclude someone from purchasing your product or service? As a salesperson, you want to be especially attuned to these kinds of restrictions so you can avoid awkward conversations later in the sales process. Now, that's a lot of information to consider, but don't let it overwhelm you. The point of this exercise is to help you focus on the people who are most likely to buy. At the beginning, keep it simple. Choose a couple of points from this list and use those as your starting point. For example, let's say you're a recruiting agency. The first version of your ideal customer profile might include just the industry and company sizes you target. For example, healthcare companies with less than 10,000 employees. That's a very basic ideal customer profile, but it's enough to get started with. As time goes on, you can revisit this basic profile and add more details to it gradually making it more specific and accurate. A word of advice. As you build your ideal customer profile, involve other people from your company. Sitting down in a conference room with the correct people internally will improve the quality of the profile significantly. At the very least, create a shared document and ask any colleagues who you think have good opinions on this topic to add their notes on what they think your ideal customer is like. Work with people from sales, account management, services, support, and anyone else who has insights into what makes someone a good or bad customer for your company. Working together, you'll be able to define an ideal customer profile that will help you as a salesperson identify the prospects who will turn into your best leads and best customers. Once you have your ideal customer profile, you can start to define the buyer personas within that profile. A buyer persona is a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer based on real data about demographics, behavior patterns, motivations, and goals. A persona represents the different types of people that exist within your ideal customer profile. If you're in B2B sales, your ideal customer profile will define which companies are a good fit for your offering, and your buyer personas will define the people at those companies who you need to work with. Let's go back to the example of a recruiting agency that targets healthcare companies with less than 10,000 employees. If your agency specializes in recruiting salespeople, then you would likely be targeting the VP of sales, the director of recruiting, and the CEO at those healthcare companies. You would then have one persona for each of those three roles, VP of sales, director of recruiting, 
and CEO. Now, if you're in a B2C space, you might be wondering how this applies to you. Don't worry, it definitely does. Your ideal customer profile will be some broad category of people, like prospective home buyers. And then your personas will describe specific kinds of people within that category, such as first time home buyers, people who are downsizing, people who are upsizing, and investors looking to buy rental properties. Even though every persona fits within your ideal customer profile, the needs and behaviors represented by each persona will be very different. Regardless of whether you're selling B2B or B2C, keep your personas simple at first. In practice, there could be a dozen or more roles involved in a buying decision, but if you immediately try to account for all of these scenarios, you'll end up with so many different personas that they ultimately won't be helpful to you at all. Start simple. Keep the first version of your ideal customer profile limited to one or two key points, and then create one persona within that profile. Then, working with other people internally, add details to that profile and that persona until you get them fully defined. And then you'll be able to expand from there as needed. Once your buyer persona structure is in place, add details to it. Focus on the perspective people have in the awareness stage of the buyer's journey, meaning they're still trying to diagnose the problem they have. As you do this, be sure to emphasize the perspective of the persona relative to the other people within your ideal customer profile. What makes their perspective unique? Why are they the person you're focusing on rather than somebody else? How are you uniquely positioned to help them with the problem they're facing? All of this information should be included in your buyer persona. To answer these questions, you might want to interview some of your previous customers. If there are people who have bought from you in the past and have seen an excellent return on their investment, get on a quick call with them and find out the answers to these questions. How do they describe their goals and challenges that your offering helps them with? How did they research those goals and challenges before they discovered your company? Did they have any misconceptions about addressing their goals and challenges before your company helped them solve them? How did they decide these goals and challenges should be prioritized? As you discuss these questions with real customers, you'll start to see patterns emerge. Those patterns are what you want your buyer persona to capture. As you do this, you'll get a much deeper understanding of the people you're in a position to help. And then you'll be able to go out and help them in a much better way. To recap, your ideal customer profile will broadly describe your target market and your buyer personas will define the specific sorts of people in that market. If you're a B2B company, your ideal customer profile will probably be at the company level, while your personas will focus on specific roles within that company. Regardless of what space you're in, you'll want to start by creating your ideal customer profile and then define your personas based on the sorts of people you can help. Then you'll be able to build your sales process by better meeting the needs of the people who match those personas.